Okay guys, today we're going to be showing you this. This is the new Ford Ranger, Ford Everest kit. It's an upgrade stereo kit uh, from Stinger Australia. And it shows you how to change these factory small stereos on the new PX2 Rangers, anything of the 2016, 2017 models, which is the XLT, XLS. They got this smaller model uh, stereo, not the big touchscreen with the Sync 3. So this has a factory reverse camera. And uh, what you want to do, the reason we're going to upgrade to this Kenwood unit today is to give him Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, smartphone connectivity, navigation maps. We're going to retain the steering wheel controls, retain the reverse camera, and digital radio as well. So it's going to be a really good upgrade. We're going to step you through on our YouTube channel, Carbon Car Systems, how to install it yourself. And uh, this kit's from Stinger Australia, so it's really good. But if for anything of these smaller models, so uh, let's go check that out. We'll show you how to do it. Alright guys, first step, we're going to move, remove these air vents across on the, either side of the actual stereo. Plastic, non-marring pry bar. What we've done is that we actually put a bit of cloth tape around the back of the pry bar because we're going to be leveraging off plastic. So you just really want to leverage underneath here. And you can go along and pop it all off top and bottom and it will actually pull this right off. So it's not that hard, but you just want to make sure if you're going to be slipping or anything like that, it's not going to damage the car. So that's why we use these pry bars and we put a bit of cloth tape around it. So, as you can see there, it does take a little bit of force as you start to pull it off. And uh, once you get it out, there we go. That's actually off, so there's one side of it. And we're gonna do the right hand side as well. Again, just a little bit of levering and you can get all those air vents off. So that's the first step. Cut that there. Yeah. Step three guys, this last plastic panel across the top, it will actually just clip off as well. This one, really just gonna be pulling it forward and she's off. Now with these, same as the last three panels, if you have any of these little white clips that are missing or stay on the car, make sure you pick them up and put them back on, okay? So, Cause it's gonna hold all your paneling on. So make sure you get those if any are missing. All right, next step, we've got six bolts we're gonna undo. One up the top, one in the middle, one down the bottom on both sides of the vehicle. Okay, it's a seven mil bolt. And we're just gonna quickly show you where they are and then we're gonna pull them off the screen. So there's one up here. Undo them quite quickly. Just make sure you don't drop them as you're pulling them out. There's one. Two. And then you got the bottom one down here. Three. And it's the same on the driver's side as it is the passenger side, so just make sure you undo all those. So once you've done that, make sure that you've ejected any CDs so you can actually turn your radio on and eject any CDs if you have any in there, because once you got it out, you're not going to be able to do that. Move your gear stick out of the way, and we're going to remove the bottom panel first. So it's as simple as putting your fingers on top and pulling forward, and you can actually get your hands behind there, or use your pry bar. So pull that forward a bit. There you go, and it's going to pop off, and you're going to pull it all the way forward, and there is going to be two plugs on the back. You've got the release clip on top, and you're going to push down on that, and it's going to pull those out. When you do this, just be careful not to scratch any plastic paneling on the car, as always. Once you've done that, there's going to be two bolts underneath. There's seven mil bolts as well. We're going to undo those, so Dave just giving you a look at those. Here they are, right here. Quickly going to undo them so we can get the rest of the stereo out. That's fine. Okay, once you've undo the, those two bolts underneath, it actually becomes really loose. We're going to pull it out from the bottom and down because there's a locking tab at the top. So we're going to pull it down and it's out. So that's pretty light and easy to do. Now you have a couple more tabs or plugs on the back we're going to release. There's only two of them. Just going to push the locking tab again and release that on the left and the right. And that's gonna pull the whole panel out. So there you go, pretty easy. From there, we're gonna undo eight bolts with the bottom part of the stereo and four up the top. So eight bolts total, so four top and bottom. Again, just using your seven mil nut uh, or socket set, really easy to do. So quickly undo all those and then we're gonna unplug and pull those out. All right, and we've got the top screen as well. So pull that one forward. This is a factory USB adapter, so it's a little bit tight, but you just gotta give it a really tight pinch and pull it out. Now this one here is a little bit different. It's got a gray interlocking lever. So you're gonna push the center of that down. We're gonna pull the lever back. 
that's going to pull the plug right out. Okay, a little bit easier. And let's have a look at this bottom one on the screen. It's got a plug on the side of it there. So you can have a look at them. You can. It's pretty straightforward. They're all going to pull out, but they've always got a locking tab of some sort that helps them stay in place. So that's all the parts out of the vehicle. Okay, guys. So this is the actual fascia kit out of the car. We'll go over on the bench now. And what we're going to do is make sure you have a carpeted bench or a plastic bench so they actually don't scratch the panelling because we're going to put this face down and you don't want to scratch it in case you want to return it to normal. But you've got 18 screws on the back here, these little silver screws everywhere. I'm going to pull this backing plate off so we can get to the AC controls. Now, they're torque screws, so I'll zoom in and see if you can see that. It's a little, sort of a star head on the, on the actual screws, okay? It's a very small one. You can buy them from uh, any hardware store. I'm gonna go through and just remove all of them. We've just attached them to a drill, but you can buy them on their own, similar to Allen keys, but it's called a torque screw, okay? Um, very simple and easy. I've... See if you can buy them in a kit and they come with about 10 different sizes for about $10. They're not expensive or um, so you can borrow it off a mate. All right, so we've removed all the screws. We're going to pull this little cover off on the right-hand side. It comes off separately, and then we're going to pull that backing plate off. And it's just a matter of pulling it forward gently and up. You just don't want to bend any pins here, and that will remove it. We're actually going to remove the ribbon cable now and a couple of these little screws so we can actually get this board out. So we're going to use our plastic pry bar for this, guys. And the trick on this is not to go right to the bottom of this plug, but up a little bit. You can lever, so I'm going to do it from the right hand side because I'm right handed. Lever it up and off, okay? So you can see that there, you're going to leave a little bit on the car and pull that off. And that will remove the top section, you can actually pull it out of the way, but we're going to undo the four screws now. Again, they're just torque screws, I'm going to quickly undo them. So we found it was actually a smaller torque screw again, so we had to go use one of our other tools, but you can buy these really small torque screws. Um, we buy them from electronics electronic store. Uh, we have a little tool kit actually. This will actually give you all the sizes you're going to need. Um, this is a 15 piece precision screwdriver kit. We bought this from JCar in Australia but any electronic store should have those. And you don't need to use a drill like we were using on the other, you know, the, the first screws. You can actually do them manually. That's a good little kit. They're about 15 bucks as well I think. Pretty cheap. Alright. Got all four of those out now. So that will actually take the front panelling off and we're going to replace that with the new stereo screen. Okay, so we've removed that top panel now and then we have the new panel which is from the, the kit that we've got from Stinger Australia and that is actually going to go onto the front or the top section of that where you remove the old one. And it actually just slots into place. There's a couple of locating tabs there. I'm going to put those four screws back in. So when you see it on the front, it goes around a hazard switch, looks nice and neat. So back in the four screws that you actually just removed, we're going to put them back in now. And they're just going to thread into the new position. It's a little bit fiddly. When you do this, you just want to slowly tighten one in. Just dropped it. Slowly tighten one in, and then you want to check on the fascia in the front that it's centered correctly, okay? So I'm going to tighten this in quickly. Just going to put it down. All right, so there you can see the four screws are done. They, they thread in very, very tight, so just do them slowly. And you want to make sure you don't move or lift this circuit board off as you're doing it. So if you do turn it over, you've got to hold that in place just to check that your, your switch is in the right position. It's completely centered, nice and neat. Okay, so just hold that paneling because it will lift off. Next step's going to be new backing plate that comes in the kit. This is going to go on. You're going to put some of those 18 screws back in, so obviously not all of them. You're going to go through, put all those in, and even that little panel that lifted off on the uh, circuit board there as well. So we're going to screw all that up, and that's the new fascia panel. So there you have the back cover all done up, nice and neat. You've got that section on there as well, so that's where the plugs are going to go. That's the new fascia panel ready for any aftermarket screen. There is one extra little trim ring that comes in the kit. It just goes on the top here. That will actually locate into the tabs along the top panelling. And we're actually going to uh, melt the plastic on those a little bit so they stay in place. But that trim ring, it sits on pretty tight, which is kind of good. We're actually going to use a soldering iron. So we're just going to heat up the little tabs so it doesn't ever move out of place. We're going to melt the plastic there. We're going to go around and do that. And that's a perfect double din size. It will fit any other aftermarket radio. We sell them with the Kenwoods because we like the Kenwood unit. It's a 
you know, really responsive unit. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, cost effective. You know, they got a they got, they got a unit that's only like seven ninety nine without CD player, like completely mechanized with all the digital media. It's really really good. As you can see here, just melting all the little tabs, and that will just basically plastic weld it in, into spots so it never moves. So we're gonna go around and just quickly do all those. All right, so now we're back in the car. We've done all the physical mounting over there on the on the bench, and we're gonna show you how to do all the wiring. We have a few peripherals we're gonna to have to do for this Kenwood deck because it's got a few extras. So uh, one is a DAB plus antenna. This is an on-glass antenna. We're gonna mount this up here. Uh, we have to do a microphone, external microphone for clear voice talking, so that it comes with any aftermarket stereo. We've got a couple of USBs because this has two USBs out. I'm gonna put one in the glove box. The factory USB down the bottom, the factory auxiliary, which is actually in the center console down here. We're gonna retain those, so just be careful when you actually do that. Work out if you're an Apple, Apple and Android, or Android user, whichever one you're gonna use most, you wanna retain there. So that's the different colors on the Kenwood. Then we have a GPS antenna, which is gonna give better navigation when you're using that Apple CarPlay Android Auto. So we're gonna show you how to do those. First step's gonna to be to actually remove this paneling here so we can run all the cables across. So on top of these, these are just little spongy things. We've had them out to have a look. We're gonna use a little pick um, this is a little right angle pick. If you're going to use something like this, just be really, really careful. But you just slide it in the top and then you're going to leave it down away from the unit. You don't want to leave it up towards the physical larger section because you can leave a mark on it. Um, so you see that comes off and it's going to push back in nice and neat. Then behind there, this, you're going to do that top and bottom. It's a 6mm, 6mm bolt, okay? So it's a little bit different size, again, to the stereo, just for Ford to make it as painful as possible and use as many parts as possible rather than use all the same screws. It's kind of silly. Um, so you're going to go through and just undo that. They're going to come out. You're going to do that top and bottom and we should be able to pull that paneling right off. So, there's that one. And there we have it. That's actually off. So you're going to put those somewhere which is going to be nice and safe. We're going to pull this pinch weld off. You're just going to pull your hand behind it and actually pull that out of the way. It is designed to push on and off really easy. It's not going to be an issue there. Okay, once that's done, you can clip this panel forward. Okay, you've got plenty of room. And all you need is enough room to be able to run your cables down it. So it's not going to pull all the way off. Well, it's, oh, it's a bit of a tight clip here. There you go. So we can actually pull the whole thing off. One little clip really holding it in place. We're gonna place it on the dash carefully so we don't scratch anything. We're gonna run our cables along here, we're gonna mount our on glass here. So, first up, microphone, external microphone. It's gonna be pretty easy to do. It's gonna vary depending on the unit. We sell the Kenwood units, we sell this kit as a pack. Uh, but we also sell the fascia panel on our on its own on, on our website, Carbon Car System. So you can actually fit it with aftermarket stereos, but Works out better with the Kenwood, I think. You know, it's got a lot of good features. We really love those units. And we're just going to pull off the double-sided tape, mount it on the front windscreen in the center. And the reason we put it over here in the center, it's away from the wind. If you're talking, if you've got passengers and stuff as well, they can both talk. You're just going to line it up into the lining. Now, to keep this up here, we put a little bit of double-sided tape around the cabling so it doesn't ever fall down. You can actually keep it nice and neat and in that location. Then we're going to run that down and we're going to run it across the dash. So see how that just pulled down? That's the reason we actually put double sided tape on it. So we're going to do that just in a minute. But what I'm going to do first is do the DAB Plus antenna. So this is the on glass antenna. So this is for the DAB Plus radio. So you still have your normal AM, FM radio on the vehicle and the factory antenna will adapt. But DAB Plus requires a new antenna for those of you that don't know. And this is it. And these are okay, they're not too bad to do. It's, it's quite simple. You get different ones, uh, but these are easy. It comes with the kit. So there's a number one on this on-glass section. You're just gonna pull that off. Make sure you don't have or touch the back of it because you're gonna leave fingerprint marks on it. So pull the number one off. Just carefully hold it from the sides and stick it on the window itself. Okay. You just wanna make sure you're gonna do this as straight as possible because you are going to see it. A little bit. So they're very clear anyway. You don't really notice them once they're on. Then pull number two off the back. Oops, just bent that over. Okay. Oh. Oops, just 
to a little bit of film on there. I'm actually going to have to pull that off. So I've just folded that clip back. I removed that quickly. So that's probably a good reason why you want to be careful when doing this. Because it is very sticky. There we go. So just uh, had the plastic stick on the back side of it, but very, very easy. Go through and stick that on nice and clear. Next step, we have this portion of the DAB antenna. And this is basically the receiver from the on glass. And it's going to line up with this little metal tab on there. There's actually a little metal tab on the top here. And you want to line those two sections up. Okay, here we go. So we're just going to pull the backing plates off these. Very easy, just using a little razor blade here. And that's off. And we're gonna line that up so it sits on there. And it's straight, and then the other section is gonna go onto your A pillar. And you wanna make that as flat as possible when you're doing it because the panel has to sit back on there. So it's nice and flat, nice and neat. Then we're gonna undo that, all the rest of the cable, and that's gonna run down with our microphone. We're gonna tape them together nice and neat so that it's all run along the factory factory looms. Okay, so we're gonna run this like this. We're gonna run it all along there. I'm gonna tape all that up. So I'm gonna put some double-sided tape on that to keep that up in place so when we pull on it, it doesn't ever fall down. And it'll be nice and neat. So we're gonna quickly do all that and we'll show you as we're finished. We'll show you how we do this double-sided tape. Basically, we just take a little square, we wrap it around the, the actual cable, and then just pull the backing off the double-sided tape. which can be a little fiddly. And when you pull that backing out, you can actually tape it up behind the lining. So, and it'll sit there without ever pulling down. Okay, so that'll actually basically sit it there. It'll, it'll tape up there nice and neat. We'll do that there, and we do it over here near the microphone because that keeps it, the parts that you're gonna see or the leverage parts really nice and neat, so. It saves you, you know, you ever having to fix it up in the future and it's, it's a little bit of extra work, but man, it just saves so much drama in the future. That's worth doing. All right, and you're gonna pull that up so it's nice and neat as, neat as possible. There you go. That's actually gonna sit there. Perfect. Now, we'll quickly show you that we actually do tape this along together. I'll just put a little bit of tape along this section just to hold it in place. And you can use whatever you got, I guess. You know, if you've got double side tape, you can use that. But I'm just gonna keep that nice and neat. And it's just to hold it in place. It's not, it doesn't have to be super, super tight or anything like that. It's just so when you put the paneling back on, you don't have any cables in the way. Um, that's all it is, really. We're using a factory tester tape. So this is a cloth tape. It's actually the same as this factory loom tape as well. So it's the exact same stuff. A bit more expensive than normal tape. I think normal electrical tape is about a dollar a roll. Tesla tape is about five to seven dollars a roll. But man, you, you get what you pay for. It's just a really good tape. And then to make life easy, uh, we like to loom some of this together. These two cables. So this is the microphone and the DAB cables. We go through, keep it nice and neat, and put a couple of little extra looms along just to make it nice and neat. And then we're going to run that into the center. So. To do that, we can actually loop around the back here. I'm gonna loop around the section just to get it around the uh, air vent there. And we're gonna put this cable, we just have a little plastic cable, um, cable runner. Uh, you, can, you can actually stick your hands right behind, it's up to you. Um, but we're gonna run that like that. We tape the cables to it and just pull it through. And we find that's probably the easiest way to do it. So, let's do that. Alright, so that's our cables through. If you wanted, you could put all that back on now. The A pillar. It's just gonna slot back down into the location. There, there actually be location tabs here, okay? That will actually slot into the dash down on the paneling there. When you put them on, you have to locate them in the section. When you if you got it in the right spot, she goes in easy. <laughs> and there you go. And that's how it's gonna look. It's nice and neat. Back to factory, we're gonna turn the bolts up, put the pinch well back in. Wind this back. Okay. 
Okay, so you're going to put all the pinch well back into place. We're going to sit here, we're going to tape these cables onto our little lever stick, and then we're going to run that across into the center. And when you do this, you want to make sure that you're out the way of your air vent. So again, you can use your tape just to tape it up out of the way. And that's probably the easiest and best way to do that. So there's our cables into the center. We're gonna put a little bit of tape on that to hold it out of the way. And it's done, done and dusted. I'm gonna put this paneling back on. I'm gonna show you the center there, how to wire up the rest. All right, so we've run that through to the center there. We're just taking our tape off the stick. Now what we did was we actually went behind this metal. There is actually metal in here. We actually came out here when we showed you running it, but we've actually looped it around the back. The reason being when we put the stereo in, you don't wanna cut those cables, okay? And uh, that's, that's probably really important because most people don't look out for it. Then we're just gonna bundle that up a little bit. And when we bundle this, you'd be careful not to right angle kink it or break the cable. So we just do that loosely and softly. And we do a larger style bundle. I'm gonna put a bit of tape around it. Once you do that tape, it just keeps it all nice and neat. And there we have our mic and our DAV antenna. We can actually sit there ready to go. Next step we're going to be using is we're going to adapt uh, or run the other USB, the spare one. Because a Kenwood uses two USBs, one for Android Auto, one for Apple CarPlay, you do need to decide which you're going to use in the factory location straight up. Um, this gentleman in this car is an Android user. Uh, Android uses the grey cable, Apple uses the black cable. So we're not going to use the grey because we're going to use the factory adapter in a minute, but the Apple one, which is gonna be his secondary one, we're gonna run into the glove box. So we're gonna run that across and down quickly now, and you just pop the glove box down. You can actually stick it through, again, behind that metal, and you should be able to put your hand in there and, and grab it, and there you have it. So that's in the, in the middle, ready to go as well. See the USB there, shut it up, done. Now, one more thing we're gonna do before we start doing all our plugs, is we have the GPS receiver. Um, again, we don't need a ton of cables on this, so there is a ton of cables. We're just gonna put a little bit of tape around that to keep it together as well. Just keeps things nice and simple and neat. And it's got double-sided tape on the back of these ones. Some are magnetic. You can put these under the dash, make sure there's no metal above it. It will interfere with the GPS receiver. You want a clear line of sight because GPS is a line of sight. We're gonna put it on top of the air vent, left or right, whichever you find easiest to get to. And it, this has to be a flat surface and it's gonna stick on top of that vent, nice and neat, right at the back. So again, you're not gonna get any cables in the way. And you see that's gonna plug in and sit back there beautifully, okay? So we're just gonna lever that out. And we've got our four cables there over on the side, ready to go. Next step, we've got a lot of uh, other parts to put in. So I'm gonna clean up a little bit of my mess as I go. And we're gonna show you how to do the plugs in the center, which is gonna adapt uh, the factory reverse camera, factory USB antenna adapter. Actually, oh, we've already got the antenna adapter plugged in there. You can see that. We're gonna show you all that from scratch. All right, so these are all the cables that actually come in the box. There's quite a few different ones, and you have this little steering wheel control or data interface. It's made by Connects 2, but it comes completely in the kit. Now, you don't need to stress too much about this. It does come with instructions that tell you what everything does. So that is actually in the box. And there is even instructions on how to fit that first initial paneling that we showed you as well. So if you forget it or don't like the video, you can step by step it there as well. So let's run through what you actually get here. You have a main harness, okay? So this is gonna be your main stereo adapter. So you're gonna do your speakers and your powers, and it's gonna do your auxiliary retention and also a USB retention as well. So that's really easy to do. You have, that's gonna plug directly in. So we might as well actually just show you that as we go. It's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, sorry, it's down the bottom here. So you have this first one with the four or three little cables. That's gonna go into the lever style one we had before. So it seems uh, a little bit uh, excessive that you've got all those wires and only coming three out, but that's all you're gonna need for that one. And then you have the second big one coming out here. Where is it? This one down the bottom. And they're gonna plug in together. So that's only gonna go in one way. Oh, it's a little bit dicky. There we go. A little bit hard to push in, but we got it. 
there we go so that's the two main harnesses that we're going to use you do have this this is the little usb adapter and it's basically got this micro usb here so you should be able to line them up and you can line them up and i'll slot in the place they should click together very easy now the next one camera adapter so this is the camera adapter here so this will do the factory reverse camera and that will only go into one section as well which is yeah, here she is, tied up in our other cables. I'll get it out of the way so you can actually see it. This little, uh, it looks like about 10 pins, and it will click in as well. And that will give us our factory reverse camera trigger. And what else do we have? We have our antenna adapter as well. So this is the antenna adapter here. So factory forward antenna to aftermarket radio antenna. So that will actually go into, I think this black one here, by the looks of things. There we go, the black one, okay. Disregard the white one. It's probably gonna be the factory GPS receiver if they were gonna use it, or it could be a secondary antenna. Sometimes they have secondary antennas as well, but we're not gonna use it. Now, we do have this Connects 2 adapter that is actually gonna plug into the new harness that we have, and there is only one way that will work. So you've got uh, 12 pins on one side, and then you've got about uh, 16 pins on the other. So it'll only go into one location, and there is a locking tab on top and you're going to push it in now you can push that in straight away and sit that there it's not going to matter now from there you've got this this is called the ct multi this is actually a patch lead that will allow the steering wheel controls to work with the aftermarket radio it comes with a series of loops on it and then a couple of outputs so you have a 3.5 mil jack a ground key one key two now this is important because this varies between radios. So if it's a Kenwood, Alpine, Pioneer, etc., cetera, um, whichever one it is, you need to know how to set it up. Now the cool thing about this, it actually comes with the instructions on how to do it. So we're gonna be using Kenwood today. So this is the Kenwood configuration down here. We need one purple loop, okay? And up the top here on the instructions, it'll actually tell you that if you go down to Kenwood, it needs the purple loop connected, so one means connected, zero means disconnected. So the orange wire and green wire, because we've got two zeros, we're going to actually cut it, all right? And that's going to give us that Kenwood style. For example, if it was Alpine, we would be cutting the green one in the middle. So that's pretty simple. You do get the instructions, so you don't need to worry about it. So we're actually going to get the green and the orange. We're just going to cut them. I'm going to insulate them and put that separate so we can actually join them back up if you make a mistake. From there, you also need to know, what we might do is insulate that straight away. So we don't forget later. It's out of the way, nice and neat. And you gotta love this cloth tape, like this is, look how neat this stuff turns out. <laughs> it's really good, it never comes loose. Um, from there, there is a little bit of a difference. Uh, you're gonna need to know which of these last four or five wires that you're gonna use. So on the Kenwood, we're gonna use wire key one. Okay, if it was a clarion, you would use the jack. Okay, so let's have a look at it. This is the jack, key one, key two. We're gonna use key one for Kenwood. And that's gonna to adapt to the Kenwood harness. All right, we're gonna adapt that in just a second. There is actually one more part that you're gonna need, which is actually separate. and actually doesn't come from Stinger. It comes from Air Pro Australia, which is the adapter from this international standards to go to the aftermarket radio. So this is an ISO international standard type operating. So that's all the speakers. We're gonna go from that to the Kenwood and it's gonna allow us to completely plug and play. There is four loose wires here. We can discuss those a little bit. So the purple and white is actually the reverse trigger. It's actually gonna trigger the screen to flip over. We're gonna wire that up. There is an antenna remote, which will actually go to the stereo as well. That will be powered every time the radio is on, it'll power the antenna on the car. Uh, you have pink which is your speed sense wire so some aftermarket radios require that for accurate gps and uh the light green wire i can't remember i think it's park, pa parking brake yeah, yeah so parking brake so we're actually not going to be using that uh, we're actually going to earth out the parking brake on the kenwood unit so you can use all the features while driving if you did do that handbrake uh, some of the features wouldn't work like dvd uh, while you're in the car uh, and driving unless the handbrake's up but we're not going to use that wire um, you also have the USB which is going to adapt from the factory USB into the Kenwood And then you have this. This is the two audio inputs for the 3.5 mil jack in the factory location And you can adapt that into any aftermarket stereo to allow 3.5 mil jack to work That's actually not going to work on this Kenwood unit um, 
We don't really see a need for it. You've got our USBs, two USBs, Bluetooth audio, everything else, so there's no real need to use that anymore. But let's go get that other plug and we'll show you that quickly and how to wire it up. Okay, so this is the other harness you're gonna use. Um, this is from TDJ or Air Pro Australia. Um, it is uh, international standards operating. The reason this is not generally included when you buy the kit is because it varies depending on the stereo that you buy. Um, when you buy the Kenwood kits from us, we, we provide it because it's, uh, it's just easier to provide it all for you. <laughs> There's no need to really do it. A um, couple of things, in the, in the one that we sell, it makes it a lot easier because two reasons. You actually get this part, this is the Connects 2 part. This is actually the steering wheel control that I was just talking about where we gave you the CT Multi, you actually get that, but when we sell the Kenwood lead, you can actually get rid of that, and you can actually use this one. It comes preset, ready to go, so there's none of that cutting or looping. And you don't use this big jack on here that's for older Kenwoods, but you've got the uh, remote continue, so that's the steering wheel control output. So that's kind of cool about the harnesses that we provide. You don't need to do that uh, multi-loom. And this is the harness. So this is the harness that comes, that plugs into the back of the Kenwood stereo, and then you've got your international standards ones on the back and they're gonna go into the one location that's on that connects to adapter. So they're gonna plug in, as you can see, and that's gonna give you majority of your wires. Now, a couple of things here. Steering wheel control, steering remote. So that will actually go to that one I just showed you. So that one I just showed you that comes in the kit, the brown wire says remote continue. They're gonna plug in and go together. So there you go, very easy to do. So that's very easy. You have power continued. That is if you're running aftermarket amplifiers. Then you have the handbrake wire out of the Kenwood unit. So you could hook that to the light green that's actually on the Connects 2, but we're actually gonna cut it off and we're gonna earth it straight out. So we're actually gonna put it to the black wire here like that. So we're gonna strip these together. And the reason being is <laughs> this way it's always getting an earth signal and that way you can or your passengers can use DVDs while driving obviously use caution <laughs> but uh, otherwise it does lock out a few of the features as well so you can't adjust things while driving uh, it's a little bit annoying um, so we're going to solder that on there in just a moment but you have the purple wire so this is reverse it'll actually say reverse on it and that will actually go to the purple white wire on the connects two that we showed you before we we don't have a connector on it so we're actually just going to cut it and we're going to solder uh, both of those on just going to cut that off Get rid of all that excess because so you don't need it. And we're going to strip that quickly. And we're going to put those together. And you could probably do this on the bench. You don't need to do it in the car, but we're showing you as we go because it's easier to show the connections. All right, so that's the two connections that we've made. This pink wire and this um, antenna remote we're not going to have to use because it's already wired through from the stereo by the looks of things yep so that's fine that's not going to be an issue so we actually don't need to do that on this car so we're not going to use those three wires so parking brake speed sense wire and antenna continued so what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to get those out of the way so I'm going to snip them off different lengths um, so they're not going to short and get them out of the way and we're going to loom those up That's just so they don't touch on any metal, give any outputs or anything, okay? So that's nice and neat, nice and loomed. And we're gonna solder these two quickly. It's gonna bend this out of the way, and make it sit neatly. And we're gonna solder that up. So quickly. These are uh, battery powered soldering irons. So these are a really cool thing, but they do take a couple of seconds to heat up. Um, but it's handy because it's not portable solder. If we don't need electricity, we can actually use them anywhere in the vehicle. If you're going to solder in the vehicle, be very, very careful not to drip the solder onto any paneling. Um, but you can see it heating up. We like to heat up the wires that we're soldering and feed the solder into it. Okay, so that's once it's heated up. Really easy to do. You can see here. You know, through, melting the solder through the wire. And we're done. We're going to tape that up. So we just finished soldering all that up guys and uh, I've just tidied this up a little bit in terms of looming. So I've got my reverse camera auxiliaries there, I've loomed everything, taped it, taped the module around. Got all the antennas. And what you want to make sure is this comes out the top. So pull it back up through the top because that's where the radio is going to be. You can leave a little bit of that excess down the bottom. Just want to make sure everything you need is out the top because that's where the stereo is going to be. So 
the last step in this install is literally just working out the mounting brackets and uh, making sure the stereo is going to be in the right location for where the fascia goes on. So, that's all the cables ready to go. We're going to push them in for now while we check the stereo and we're going to check the panelling. We're going to mount it up now. So, I'm going to go put the brackets on the side of the stereo. We're going to trial fit it and trial fit the fascia. Oh, okay, so these are our new mounting brackets that come in the kit. They say L and R, left and right. Okay, so um, you know the the right hand side is your driver's side so we're going to make sure the unit's down the bottom and this is the driver's side when it goes in the dash like that okay so it's going to be the right hand side now this is going to be a bit of trial and error um, of where you're going to mount it because there's a couple of variables to get it where it's going to sit in the dash properly so what i'm going to do is just put it in a position to start with i'm lining off these four center holes it's going to vary with each different unit you get you get screws in the actual kit Come with the stereo. Um, I don't have a screwdriver. Let me grab a screwdriver. So you get screws that come in the kit, and that'll help you do them up. And you're just going to put four in the location to both front and, or sorry, passenger and driver side. So we're not going to do too many at the moment. We're just going to do these two opposite ones like this, just to actually put it in a location. Because we're going to trial fit it. We don't want to put everything in and then have to move it too much. We're going to do the same on the other side. Just use the same holes. All right, so that's our that's where we're going to start at. So we're going to put that in the car, and then we're going to try and sit this panel on, and we're going to see we want it to sit like that. So I hope you can see that nice and flush. So we're going to mount that in the car first, try that on top, make sure it's in the right location. Alright, so here we are in the car, I'm going to sit this in. And we're actually going to put a couple of bolts in so it's in the right location. And these are the uh, original 8mm bolts, or 7mm bolts, sorry, that we had. We're going to put uh, top, top right, bottom left. We're going to tighten them up using our ratchet. Now, this could take you a few goes, eh? it's going to be trial and error literally because um, every stereo is different, the holes in each stereo are different and uh, yeah, you might want to sit them further in the dash, just further out the dash, we like to sit things flush. But there we go, so that's going to be in the location, you don't want to move it around. I'm going to try and put the panelling up and under and just see how we go. So, <laughs> mate, I reckon uh, that's a winner yeah. um, straight off the bat. So. You can see it's nice and flush down the sides here. And if you really wanted, you could bolt that up and check it out. And you can put that bolt in the locator, so it's going to sit there. That, to me, looks almost perfect. Mm. What do you think? 100%. <laughs> Mate, I think that's perfect. Um, so we're going to leave it like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull that back off now. And we're going to undo that, and we're going to put four bolts, uh, or, or sorry, a couple more bolts, two bolts in either side, or four bolts in either side to keep it nice and tight. And then we're going to plug it all in and uh, mount it up. Alright, so we put all our screws in guys, now we're going to actually wire up everything we need on the back of the Kenwood stereo. So, see we put three screws in either side, nice and neat, ready to go, and we're going to start adapting. It's going to be quite easy on these, uh, GPS receiver is going to go in, we have the reverse camera which is this yellow one, it's going to go into the rear view camera, so there we go, rear view camera. Uh, when we put these together, we always tape these. Uh, the reason being, just don't want to pull them apart if anyone else is working on the car, yanking on cables, when you're pushing it back in the dash, you don't want it to fall off. Um, we're not going to use these two, which like I said, we're not going to retain that uh, AUX because the Kenwood, this new Kenwood doesn't have it, or it is slightly different actually, the new Kenwood has a video AUX, 3.5mm jack, which is not just stereo audio, so these are just audio side. Um, so it actually wouldn't work properly because the Kenwood uses through its 3.5mm video as well, which is kind of a cool thing. Um, but we can do video through USB, so there's no need. Um, we've got our antenna adapter here, which is for the normal AM FM. So all these will pretty much only go in one location. <sighs> Push them in nice and tight there, keep that. I'm actually going to fix this GPS, it's a bit tight. I'm going to go over the top just to keep things neat. That's nice and neat. We will have our microphone there, that's a 3.5 mil, and our DAB. They will go on the back of this section. One says DAB. DAB, 3.5 mil jack. 
as in the microphone and we're also going to do the power cable and USB adapters so we have two USBs we're going to adapt we have one that goes in the glove box which is the Apple one which will go into the black one and we have the factory one which we're going to adapt for the Android Auto so it's actually going to go into the grey port again these we're actually going to tape up make sure they don't come loose so anything that's sort of plugged together we do that to um, I don't know it's just a preventative it saves you in the future you're not going to have any drama and that's it guys and we're going to put that back in the dash you're going to put your panels on alright I'm just going to sit that back in the dash when you do this you just want to make sure it sits in nice and neat you don't want too much pressure on any of the cabling so it is going to be a little bit tight so you're going to have to fiddle around with it a little bit and that's it, it's gonna bolt up there. We're gonna put our four bolts in. We're gonna do the nice and neat. We're gonna put that panel back on. So let's do those four bolts firstly. Okay, uh, we've actually put it in now. We've got our four bolts. What we're gonna do is actually, before we pack all this up, we're actually gonna test everything works. So you wanna test steering wheel controls, microphone, reverse camera, make sure it all works. Fix these cables up nice and neat so they're actually all gonna bundle in there beautifully. Um, and then we're actually gonna just put these two sections. This is gonna be the main fascia panels for your AC controls and then your bottom ones for your powers. So it's all going to bundle up there nice and neat. This is the Kenwood initial setup. You're going to turn demo mode off. Reverse camera interruption you're going to turn on. And uh, that's the main ones. You've got reverse guidelines. You're going to turn that off on this car because it actually had it in the camera I believe from memory. We'll have a look in a second. That's the finished setup. You can actually match the colours of the buttons to the car. Uh, we can actually turn the ignition on test the reverse camera out. Boom! Factory reverse camera looks really good. Larger screen, 7 inch screen, so that's awesome. So that's really easy to do. Now we get steering wheel control, so we're going to go into radio. Let's test those out. There you go. Steering wheel controls all work. It'll have skip left, skip right. Everything's working, so you want to go do that. Um, you also want to pair up your phone, test your phone's working. And there's radio, so very easy. But the Apple CarPlay and air mirroring on this is really cool, so we'll show you that quickly at the end. But that's the install done. Test all that before you put your paneling on. Uh, we'll get the panel. Okay, so we've got the panels. Just make sure you put your plugs back in and uh, you're doing the reverse of what you did to get it off. Just It's actually probably a little bit easier. <laughs> got tons and tons of room now. Gonna push up underneath. And we're going to screw that up very simply and easily so you want to just square it up nice and neat as you go so, yep just want to test that so Dave's just testing that the fascia panel will open and close so this is a 7 inch screen so it's actually got the, the folding screen with the DVD behind it some of the mechless ones from Kenwood like the uh, 7017 which actually have no CD no DVD they're not even going to fold so it doesn't really matter um, Anything with the CD behind that, you probably want to test it and just make sure it's not going to clip on the panelling. Steering wheel. So I'm going to do these up nice and neat. And you're sort of just going to keep them loose and make sure everything else works as well. So we can actually see. Oops, uh, the steering. Works really good. Alright. So I'm going to do the rest of that up. I'm going to put the four bolts on the side or six bolts and we're going to put the panel on the bottom. There's the two underneath. Don't forget those and put the bottom paneling on. Put it all back together and we're going to test it right at the very end one last time. So there you have it guys. That is the finished result of the new PX2 Ranger kit. So that's a full DIY video we're posting on Carbon Car Systems. So if you've got a PX2 Ranger 2016, 2017 model and you have that small little screen that does the reverse camera, this is the way to go. Retains all your factory USB, factory reverse camera, give you a large screen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, um, nab through those things, and very, very affordable. I mean, the kit itself and the unit, around 1,500 bucks. Um, you can buy the faces alone for a couple hundred bucks, and you can fit any other deck, but these Kenwood ones are our preference. Um, very, very cool units.